That's one thing you have to know wherever you make your stay. Came from a long through line of everyday Americans. Hello there, everyday Americans. We are live for the our bi-monthly, I guess semi-monthly Constitution Study Q&A. It looks like we're light today. I've only got a couple people online. Not seeing many people in the uh, in the the YouTube and and Twitter world. Um, again, Periscope is now Twitter Live, so whatever. Um, as always, if you are on the social medias and you have a question, type it into the chat. I should see it here, and then I will respond. If you are on the website, um, then uh, if you put a comment in, I should see it and I will answer it. Or if you want to talk live, well, you're a little late for today, but you can always register at constitutionstudy.com, register for the live Q&A, and you can join the Zoom video. And I like the Zoom video because it allows us to interact. So uh, before we get started, I do have a short announcement. I have received my very first warning from YouTube. Yay! As people like to say, if you're getting flack, you're over the target. Uh, I want everybody to know here that in YouTube's opinion, last the, the last Q&A had medical misinformation in it. Of course, when I asked YouTube, uh, excuse me, was that the CDC data from the CDC website or is that the, the randomized peer-reviewed studies that we quoted? And their answer was, no, we reviewed it and it was medical misinformation. So, uh, so that means two things. One is obviously we're over the target if we're pissing Google off. Um, so I'm not too upset about that, but it means that sooner or later, YouTube is going to give me the boot, just like Facebook did. Uh, surprise, surprise, surprise. So if you currently follow me on YouTube, if you subscribe to the Constitution Study on YouTube, please head over to Rumble, head over to Constitution Study. I am looking at doing this live on Rumble as well. I have not in the past because I got I have to, to pay, I have to get a paid Rumble account to actually do live streams, but Hey, if uh, if Google's going to kick me off, and you know, if I want to get more attention, I've been seriously considering. I've been considering it anyway. Now I may just pull the trigger and say, "Fine, I'll give Rumble their their fee every month so that I can broadcast this live to Rumble as well." So, uh, and yes, if YouTube does kick me off, I will still find a way to stream this. I'll figure it out. But uh, that's been uh, well. It's been a fun couple of weeks, but that's what is relevant to. Uh, the Constitution study. So again, if you have questions, type them in. If you're on the Zoom call, ask them. I sit here ready and waiting for the first question. Don't everybody talk at once. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's see. You know, it is. I do notice it's funny. We seem to go through peaks and valleys. I was getting eight, nine, 10 people on, on YouTube. Now I'm getting one. <laughs> and I have a strange feeling that one may be Tunnel Lord making sure that he can talk to people on YouTube. Um, actually, no, it isn't me. Oh, hey, we actually have a real person on YouTube. Yay. Uh, but yeah, it's, it, and again, it, it could just be the season, the time, who knows, but Christopher, welcome. You're, you're muted and hiding, but I did see you join in. Um, no, I'm unmuted. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, yeah, Chris, I got it. Someone knows that Chris Ann Hall is, on, is in Facebook jail. Uh, I've been kicked off of Facebook for hmm, almost a year now. Uh, so I do broadcast on Rumble. I do upload my videos on Rumble. The only thing I haven't done on Rumble is the live streams because their live, um, their, their live video requires a paid account and i just don't get that many views on rumble i get maybe a dozen or two dozen views on rumble a month you know so it's like uh you know now who knows as things change like i said if people are following i i've been announcing i've been telling people if um if you're following me on youtube it's time to look elsewhere because sooner or later youtube will kick me off so by the way, hello, North Dakota. I don't know where in North Dakota you were. Uh, one quick question, North Dakota. Did I see you when I was up in North Dakota last month? 
We'll find out. So questions. Anybody got questions for me? Uh, <clears throat> I find this interesting from the Idaho Constitution. It's like Article 5, Section 25. Uh, the judges of the district courts shall on or before the first day of July in each year report in writing to the justices of the Supreme Court such defects or omissions in the laws as their knowledge and experience may suggest. And the judge justices of the Supreme Court shall on or before the first day of December of each year report in writing to the governor to be to be by him transmitted to the legislature together with his message such defects and omissions in the constitution and laws as they may find to exist. This is kind of an interesting section. It sounds just like the district courts tell, tell the Supreme court or the Supreme court tells the governor. So the governor go tells the legislature about a problem. Um, well, think of it this way. Uh, the constitution of the United States requires the president give us a, a, a transmit to the Congress a state of a un the state of the union and it's to be here's where we are and that includes any recommendations that he might have it really isn't it's the same concept i think but um what you're dealing with is the the courts rather than going directly to the legislature with what they see as issues in the law saying let's get the governor to give his or her two cents as well, right? Because the the you know the Supreme Court collects them from all the district courts. That goes to the governor. The governor sends it with his suggestions to the to the legislature, which then decides how, how if and how they want to deal with it. Queen, hello, Queen Violin and Lady Cello. Welcome to the Constitution Study Live Q and A. That's a very unique name. Yeah, Queen Violin and Lady Cello. I just you make me think of the of the, the 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 two cellos on uh, YouTube. I love listening to their music. They've got some beautiful stuff. So, uh, other questions. Um, it's going to be a pretty short night if nobody has any questions. I mean, I've been I've been talking about this on the radio program. I've been talking about this on on my, my videos and my podcast saying, you know, Hey, bring up questions, bring them here. We'll try to answer them. Oh, so Alex, did you just change your name? <laughs> yes <laughs> so alex my, uh, alex has it has a has a is moonlighting as as queen violin and lady cello it was my uh daughter's name for for their musical lessons oh okay yes <laughs> it it reminds me I don't know if you saw this, but uh, a while back, um, when we were when all the, the courts were still in lockdown, some poor guy, some poor lawyer, was on a Zoom call with a judge and another lawyer, and he had a cat filter on his system. It was his sec it was a secretary's assistant, whatever. They, she had a cat filter on, and he couldn't figure out how to actually turn it off. So he's trying to do to talk uh, about this case. And the judge says, do you know you look like a cat? <laughs> he goes, well, I'm going to assume you're not actually a cat. So let's proceed. It was, I, I, you felt sorry for the poor guy. So how, we got you on, Alex. Any, any more questions? Come on. It's, 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 I can't have answered all the questions in the oh, world. Okay. So this is interesting. Um, and the Idaho Constitution, it states from Article 3, Section 26, from and after the 31st day of December in the year 1934, the legislature of the state of Idaho shall have full power and authority to permit, control, and regulate or prohibit the manufacture, sale, keeping for sale, and tra tra transportation for sale of intoxicating liquors for beverage purposes. Now, this is, this is very interesting because it's like heavily 
regulated out here, liquor. Um, is that legal? I've always wondered that. Uh, sadly, the answer is yes. Uh, let me pull this up here. Because, all right, where are we here? Uh, to do, to do. But those are intoxicating beverages. All right. So the 18th Amendment established what's commonly called as prohibition, meaning the manufacture, sale, or transportation of intoxicating liquids. Um, uh, let's see, in all territory subject to the jurisdiction of beverages are hereby prohibited, right? So um, the manufacture, sale, or transportation of intoxicating liquids, they decided that really wasn't a good idea. So the 21st Amendment repealed the 18th Amendment, but Section 2 says the transportation or importation of, into any state, territory, possession of the United States for delivery or use of their intoxicating liquids in violation. Of, no, sorry, wrong one. Uh, uh, nope. Uh, what am I missing here? The amendment is hereby repealed the transportation or importation into any state, territory, possession of the United States for delivery or use there in a tax in violation of the laws thereof is hereby. Okay. So I, I misread that at first. So the, when we ratified the 21st amendment, which repealed the second amendment basically said that, that the transportation or importation of intoxicating liquids could be in effect, could be regulated by state law. And because it was said that way in the U.S. Constitution, in effect, gives federal courts jurisdiction. It's the only place in the law where we have, in effect, uh, dual jurisdictions, because um, the Constitution of the United States says, listen, if you're going to transport or import intoxicating liquids, contrary to state law, it's also violating the U.S. Constitution, which also makes it a federal issue. Um, the How far that goes, again, this is not a power delegated to the United States, so it would it's not prohibited to the states. So it is a power of the state. The question really comes down to, um, since that is a since since it is written in the Constitution of the state of Idaho, yes, the state the, the citizens of the state of Idaho said yes. The supreme law of Idaho um, says that they can regulate uh, intoxicating liquids. Hey, that's. I mean, I I can always appreciate when a state, as, you know, asserts their sovereignty and their power. I guess I mean I don't have a problem with it. I mean I don't know. Yeah, I mean it really comes down to, um, you know, do the people of Idaho still want the government to regulate intoxicating beverages? So, yeah. Wendy, Wendy has a question. What does the Constitution say about military powers trying to overtake civil authority, like General Milley? Um, all right, there's, there's, it, it's, it, it seems like it, that could easily be a bit of a loaded question, Wendy, but let's take a look at this. The Constitution says that the civilian power, the commander-in-chief of the United States, is a, must be a civilian, right? It is the president of the United States um, is the commander-in-chief. That means that, in effect, the top general, the, the top officer is the president of the United States, who is a... Um, uh, who is a civilian. In fact, when uh, any time a serving military officer ran for president between the time they were elected and they were actually um, installed in office, they resigned their commission in the military. So that we, because we do not have, you know, the military is supposed to be under civilian control. Now, when you talk about General Milley, and there's been a lot of Agita. There's been a lot of stuff thrown around about what General Milley did. As I understand it, General Milley um, did violate the chain of command by interposing his will on his commanding officers. It's not so much that he was overtaking the civilian authority. He did not so much say that um, you don't have to... Um, uh, that, that the president is no longer commander in chief. He just says, listen, he told his subordinates, run it by me first. He also uh, uh, allegedly told China that if Trump went 
back crazy and was going to initiate attack, he would let them know that is a, a, uh, uh, that's a violation of several federal laws. Um, and I'm drawing a blank on some of them. Obviously it's a, um, uh, I think it's conduct on becoming, but I'm not sure the exact legal definition. So I may be wrong on that. Um, it is a, a violation of the chain of command. It is, um, um, uh, it is failure to follow a lawful order. So that's the big thing. And, and this is the part that I find most interesting is if General Milley thought that Trump was going to lose it and do something rash, he really had two legitimate uh, things he could have done. First, he could have approached uh, the vice president, right? Vice President Pence said, Listen, I am concerned that 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 you know Trump is is not handling this well. That uh, his actions, you know, that that he's he's not in his right mind. His actions may start uh, a war. Um, consider enacting section four. Uh, yeah, section four of the Twenty Fifth Amendment, which is the process whereby the vice president and majority of the cabinet can. Um, effectively trans temporarily transfer presidential powers from the president to the vice president. It has never been done in U.S. history, but it is legal. The other part is the part of the oath of, of, a, of an officer is to follow all lawful orders. And that word lawful is important. The, you know, if, if he believed that president, that any president, but he was worried about Trump, that President Trump has unlawfully ordered a, a, some sort of strike. It is not only his right, it is his duty to not enact that order. And in fact, that, that would be grounds for him to, uh, further grounds for him to go to the vice president and say, you know, he just ordered me to nuke China, or he just ordered me to nuke Afghanistan, or, you know, and uh, also to suffer the consequences, right? So, he is a um, he is an officer in the military. He is not part of the chain, as I understand it. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs is not part of the chain of command, meaning orders from the president don't go through him. Um, they go through the secretaries, uh, Secretary of Defense, and the other secretaries directly to the the different de uh, departments of the military. Um, so uh, he should be in quite a bit of legal trouble under the UCMJ, but where where the the Constitution doesn't say doesn't say listen if someone in the military um, uh, doesn't follow an order this is what you do that's not that is actually established the, the rules for that are actually established by Congress. Because Article One, Section Eight gives the power to set the rules and regulations for Congress for the military to Congress, so it actually is not uh, you know, directly in the Constitution. The only thing that could happen is if we were in a state of war and General Milley had done had, had contacted our enemy and said, "Listen, if they try to do something, we'll stop you." That would be treason. Um, but since he did not make war on the, the United States. Neither did he give aid and comfort to a declared enemy. I know a lot of people consider China an enemy, but they are not a declared enemy. Um, he did not commit treason. Uh, so there, it, it would be under the control of the, the what's called the Uniform Code of Military Justice, which is established by Congress as a power delegated them under, under Article One, Section Eight. Okay. Hey, anyone else? Keep throwing the questions out here. But it was a good question, Wendy. I just it it it's you know I get when I when I said it seems a little loaded. It 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 was not a it was not meant as a as a question of the of how you're asking the question. Is there's a lot behind there that's got a lot of emotion in it, and uh, there I try to answer those accurately but carefully.
no more. Come on. It's only been 20 minutes. You know, everyone's we've run out of questions already. This is not good. Well, it could mean two things. People, people are educated now, or they just don't know what to ask. Uh, sadly, based on recent comments, I've heard your, your first supposition doesn't seem to pass muster. <laughs> I mean, I actually been going. So I've been talking on the radio program and on, and on a couple of the videos, telling people to, to you know, read the Constitution, write down questions, and then one option is to bring them here, bring them here, and we'll we'll answer us. Well, are you talking about questions off on America Out Loud, like people leaving questions? Anyway, you know, I've I've talked about it, America Out Loud, to say, hey, you know, I, I I've, I've been encouraging people to, um, to read and st- to read the Constitution, and my tool for studying it is. When you read it, have a pad and paper, make two lists. One is everything you found that you didn't realize was, was there, something new you discovered. And then the other were questions. Um, but, uh, uh, and, and, you know, when you're looking for answers to questions, one of the options is come here. And that's what we do on the Q&A. Uh, Papa Prez one. Your father was murdered in South Carolina. That is actually a state issue, not a U.S. constitutional issue. Um, if he was, if, and, and most likely it was not murder because murder is requires intent. It could possibly have been manslaughter. Um, the, you know, un- unless they, they intended to kill your father, it more likely was some form of manslaughter, but that is entirely a state issue. That is not, uh, legally, that's not an issue for the federal government for the U S constitution. Uh, so this is interesting. Um, so uh, this is Article 3, Section 11, having to do with the legislature. Uh, it states, each house may, for good cause shown, with a concurrence of two-thirds of all the members, expel a member. Now, well, I don't know if that means, like, are they no longer a house rep, or are they just not allowed to come on the Capitol? No, it means they're, they are removed from office. It's, well, it's actually... Crazy. It it's well it, it's actually quite similar to uh let's see it's article one section uh do do no where is it here ah article one section five each house shall be the judge of the elections returns and qualifications of its own members and a majority of each shall constitute a quorum to do business um uh, it's but a smaller number may adjourn from day to day. It may be authorized to compel attendance members. Uh, oh, and this is, uh, I'm sorry, each house may determine the rules of its proceedings, punish its members for disorderly behavior, and with the concurrence of two thirds, expel a member, which is one of the reasons oh. why you can, um, uh, it's why you almost never hear about people impeaching a member of Congress. There's nothing that prevents you from impeaching a member of Congress, but you have to get two houses to agree to impeach them. Whereas if it's a, if it's a house member, you only have to get one house. If it's a Senator, you have to get the Senate. So um, it, 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 it has, I believe once in American history, a member of Congress is actually impeached, but you almost never hear of it because it was um, uh, it, it was um it's harder. It's like, why go? The only advantage you have of impeachment over simply being expelled is if they're expelled, they can run again and become and, and, and end up back in the same office. Whereas if they're impeached, part of that punishment can be they're no longer allowed to hold office um, within any, any office of trust or profit within the United States. So, mm. right. Oh, yeah. Well, that tells you everything you need to know about the <laughs> the people in federal. Then you have a bunch of flo- full blown communists, and none of the uh, the supposedly liberty minded people are uh, expelling those communists. Well, uh, un- understand the reason you you rarely see uh, well, one the reason you rarely see ethics complaints when you see them they rarely go anywhere is the last thing a member of Congress wants is to realize that they may be held responsible for what they do. And, you know, the saying is people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. 
there is so much corruption, so much illegality in what happened in Congress. If all the unethical behavior was actually reported and dealt with, um, the Capitol would be half empty. So oh, uh, what about right. all these illegals walking right into our country? Well, North Dakota, here's an interesting point. Immigration is not a federal power. I'm going to say that again because somebody just fell out of their chair. According to the Constitution, immigration is not a federal power. Congress in Article 1, Section 8 is given the power to, I'm going to find the exact language. Um, uh, there we go. To establish a uniform rule of naturalization. Naturalization is the process of be going from being an alien to a citizen, right? So someone shows up, they are not, they're, they're not a U.S. citizen, they are an alien. Um, we, we use a lot of other terms, but legally they are an alien. They are not fully subject to our laws. They then, Congress has established a rule for naturalization. How do you be, go from being an alien to being a citizen. Now, I also contend that this extends to establishing um, when someone in, is a, a citizen at birth, that's a little weaker ground, but uh, so what about all these illegal ends? I like what uh, a governor Abbott's doing and saying, well, since the federal government won't do what it's told us it's gonna do, uh, we'll do it ourselves. And all of the federal weenies that are saying it's a violation of the supremacy clause um, have no clue what they're talking about because Congress does not have the legal power to establish rules for immigration. Tenth Amendment, if it's not a power delegated to the United States nor prohibited by the Constitution to the states, it remains with the states respectively or with the people. Since immigration is not delegated to the United States and it is not prohibited to the states, immigration is actually a state issue, not a federal one. Uh, so yes, Texas has every legal right to control its border, including its border with Mexico. Um, the, as, as far as the other nonsense, remember, somewhere around a half of the people who voted to inform their states of who to choose for president voted for this idiot. There's no, I, I can't sugarcoat it. I, I can't pretend that it's all nice and oh well no half of the people somewhere around half of the people who in this country who voted for electors for president told their states to to hire this idiot uh, he is our fault we are reaping the rewards of how we have chosen to govern our country so um sorry everyone he's our fault even if you didn't vote for him, even didn't vote for electors for him, as a as a people, we chose him. So it's hopefully maybe we'll learn our lesson. History has shown if we do, it won't be for very long. Uh, let's see. Can I sue Fauci, CDC, or NIH through the state? Uh, no, not for the death of your father. Um, again. Uh, uh, unlawful death is a state issue. It needs to be dealt with the state. What uh, what you could sue, um, what you probably, what you might, the, the closest thing you could do as far as Fauci, the CDC, NIH, NIAD, any of those, is for um, deprivation of, of rights under color of law. Uh, 42 USC 1983, I believe. Um, but good luck with that. But that has not that is there's not a a a link because while while doctor the the doctor Fauci bureaucrat with a doctor's with a medical degree uh, Fauci and those others provided advice. Um, not only. Did that advice have no legal authority over whatever hospital your father was in? Um, 
even the laws and regulations that were done outside of the Constitution are void. They have no legal remedy. They had no legal uh, power over that hospital. If the hospital, uh, through its negligence or through its um, malpractice, led to the death of your father, that is a state issue, not a federal issue. Uh, thoughts of becoming a sovereign man or woman. I was asked this question not that long ago. Distinguish the, uh, the adjective sovereign from what's called the sovereign citizen movement. Now, most sovereign citizen movements I, have, I am aware of um, are less about sovereignty and more about anarchy. It's this idea that the government has no authority over an individual, which is patently false. The Constitution of the United States, the preamble says, we the people ordained and established the Constitution. In that Constitution for the United States, we created a federal government. We gave it three branches. We established its powers. We set its limits. And the fact that we don't enforce it is our fault, not theirs. We are all sovereign over a, some area. In other words, you're sovereign over yourself. What most people, when they're talking about the sovereign citizen movement, what they're really talking about generally, and this may not be true for all, this is, this is only the groups I've been made aware of, is um, they are anarchists. Uh, they don't believe the government has any legitimate power. Therefore, they do not recognize any of the laws of any government at the state, federal, and even local level. Um, so they, they truly are, are anarchists. Uh, citizen is not a word we want to use to describe ourselves. Actually, it is. Or at least I, I contend citizen is, subject is not. So hang on a second. Let me grab my handy dandy dictionary here. Um, the masters. I mean, aren't we the masters of our government? Because I mean, we created uh, most of the states say that all power is inherent in the people. You're correct. That's a state constitution. That's not a uh, it's not in the uh, federal constitution. But remember, the federal constitution was designed to create the federal government. It was designed, the system was designed to have a, the states as a, as a buffer between the people and the, and the government of the union. Uh, it's just they've, they've, given, they've given up. So citizen, at least according to Noah Webster, is, de, is defined as the native of a city or an inhabitant who enjoys the freedom and privileges of the city in which he resides, the freeman of a city as distinguished from a foreigner or one not entitled to its franchises, uh, as opposed to a subject, which is someone under the power or dominion of another. Uh, no, Papa Rez, the United States is not a corporation. That is a myth. Uh, the, the corporate, that was the Incorporation Act of, was it 1870, 1871, incorporated the city of Washington, D.C., not the United States of America. Even if they tried to incorporate the United States of America, that is not a power delegated to the United States. Therefore, the United States government has no, author no legal authority to do that. So no, I, I hear that, there, you know, that, that's not uncommon, but no, it just, it is not true. The United States is not a corporation. It is a union of sovereign, free and independent states, or at least, it was until the states stopped acting like free and independent states. Which, all right, so what we're talking about, you, you brought up, you made me think of free and independent states. Let me bring up a subject since we're running a little light on questions here. So everyone here is familiar with Biden's uh, effective declaration of war against the Constitution, the states, and the people of the United States, right? The, the private business vaccine mandate. Um, we've had, we're now up to what, 28 states? Um, that have, they're going to fight this, right? Yeah, now, first of all, um, most of the states, if they said they're going to do anything, simply say they're going to sue. So let me get this straight. A, the, the, the states 
ratified the constitution that created the United States of America, the union we call the United States of America, right? The states created it when they ratified the constitution. We, through our states, created that entity. We establish its powers, we establish its boundaries, yet the states are gonna go beg to the federal government to protect them from another branch of the federal government. That is, not a, that is not a free and independent state. That is a vassal. That is no different than the colonies under British rule. They had no legal authority. They had to go to London and beg for, for a, a, a redress from the king or from parliament. Um, the states are acting like vassals. They are, uh, I mean, they, they've just become spineless weasels. And I have zero respect for, now, uh, I believe Texas and possibly Florida have talked about doing more than just suing, but they haven't actually, I've not seen any language of what they're actually going to do. Um, uh, Governor Abbott, I think, said he was, he signed an executive order. I can't find that executive order, so I have no idea what that executive order actually says or does. I, I don't know. But this is the one that really got me. And I was actually talking to a lawyer earlier today um, and we had an interesting discussion about this. So the state of Arizona announced proudly that they were the first of the vassal states to sue uh, the Biden administration for this egregious attack on th this, this coup, this, this, this coup d'etat that says the president of the United States now gets to dictate uh, the laws contrary to the Constitution of the United States. I actually found the complaint and I read the complaint. And has anyone seen that sign that you put in a wall that says, you know, place, you know, a pound head here? That's what I felt like. So here is the complaint Arizona has made against the president of the United States and his illegal executive order usurping the, the powers of the people of the state of Arizona. He said, it is a violation of the equal protection clause because it's not equally applied. Now, for those of you who are not as intimately familiar with the constitution as I am, the equal protection clause actually comes from the 14th amendment. In fact, let me pull it up here because I like being accurate and detailed. And the 14th amendment of the constitution says, among other things, it says, uh, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. That's the due process clause. Then comes, nor deny to any person within his jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. That's the equal protection clause. So if a state cannot deprive someone of equal protection of the law, that applies to the states, not to the federal government. There is no federal equal protection clause. However, the idiot... AG in Arizona, and I, I, I'm sorry for using names, but I can think of no other way to describe these people, said that the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, which specifically is addressed to the states, is incorporated against the federal government via the Due Process Clause of the Fifth Amendment. Now, the Due Process Clause of the Fifth Amendment, again, let me pull it up because I want to be I want to quote right from the source. I don't want to be accused of, of Mr. Arnold says, um, no person shall, yeah, there's a bunch of other things. And then it says, uh, nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. So this guy, and again, he went to law school, which means he probably knows diddly squat about the Constitution, said that the language of the Constitution that specifically applies the, that part of the, that the Equal Protection Clause to the states is actually applied to the federal government because the due process clause is also in, in, in the Fifth Amendment. Rather than just looking at it saying, it's a Fifth Amendment violation, you buffoon. The, the executive order, it's a violation of the Tenth Amendment because it's not a power delegated to the United States. It's a violation of the Fifth Amendment because it deprives business owners not only of their liberty, but of their property without due process of law. That makes it not only that makes it a federal crime, Title 18, United States Code, Section 242, deprivation of rights under color of law. All right. So even these idiots that are putting together these lawsuits have their 
cranium so far up their legal rectums, they can't make a coherent argument as to what is wrong with this executive order. I look at that, if, if I were a judge, I would look at that, I would laugh that AG out of court. <clears throat> so that's my two cents on that fun and games. Okay, uh, any more questions? Hopefully we got more questions, otherwise it's gonna be boring. Uh, let's see, okay, so. Are you doing like a study on the Idaho constitution there, Tunnel Org? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Mr. T, my new nickname for him is Mr. T. Hey, um, it, it worked out, didn't it? <laughs> uh, um, it's, this is just interesting because this this piece of code or, or from a uh, section from the Idaho Constitution uh, states, <clears throat> the legislature sh uh, shall have no power to deprive the judicial department of any power or jurisdiction which rightly pertains to it as a coordinate department of the government, but the legislature shall provide a proper system of appeals and regulate by law when necessary. Hold on. The methods of proceeding in the exercise of their powers of all the courts below the Supreme Court. So, so far, so far as the same may be done without conflict with this constitution provided, however, that the legislature can provide mandatory minimum sentence, sentences for any crimes and any sentence sentence it and any sentence opposed imposed shall be not less than mandatory minimum sentence so provided any right, mandatory where, where, where are you i got I, I gotta read this because it not, nothing personal but legally trying to understand legalese verbally is it's a brain twister oh <laughs> um okay so I'm, I'm actually looking at the Idaho Constitution. Where, where are you reading from? Uh, Article 5, Section 13. Article 5, Section 13. Uh, the legislature have no power to deprive the judicial department of any power or jurisdiction which rightly pertains to it uh, as coordinate department of the government. Okay, so the, so the legislature, see, in the, in the federal constitution, with the exception of the, of the uh, jurisdiction specifically enumerated in Article 3, Congress gets to determine the jurisdiction of the federal courts. This is saying that the legislature of Idaho does not have that power over the judiciary of Idaho except the legislature can set up a system of appeals uh, and regulate by law when the methods of proceeding exercise of powers of all the courts below. So it can regulate the method of certain proceedings, it appears. So, uh, you know, okay, court of appeals, what's the structure of the court of appeals? When does it go from one court to another? Sounds like stuff like that. Uh, as long as it doesn't conflict with the constitution, However, the legislature can provide mandatory minimum sentences for any crime and any sentence imposed shall be not less than the mandatory. Okay, so it basically limits what the Idaho legislature can tell the judiciary what to do. See, one of the most interesting things, if you read Federalist Paper number 78, Alexander Hamilton was talking about the, the judiciary and the, the federal judiciary has no power. Uh, the way he put it, it, has, it says they have neither force nor will, only judgment. They're even dependent on the executive branch for the enacting of their opinions. So when you hear about a federal court ruling, know immediately that somebody is either misspoken or doesn't understand what they're talking about because federal courts do not rule. They offer opinions. That's it. They can't even lead. They have no methodology to enforce those opinions. So, um, you know, a, we, we hear about all these, uh, you know, stays and, and counter stays and, and overturning. Let's say a federal judge issues a stay on a law and on a, pick an Idaho, any Idaho law. I don't care what it is. The Idaho law passes, legislature passes a law. Governor signs it. They sue a federal judge enjoins that the enforcement of that law it says you can't enforce that law do you realize that that judge has no mechanism to force idaho to comply none whatsoever 
the only thing that could be done is if Idaho did not comply, the president could uh, uh, find some mechanism to uh, force Idaho to not to, to uh, comply with the 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 uh, injunction. Right. Courts in, in the federal world, courts have no power. Now, here, what's being if I read this properly and I, I haven't really had time to digest it is the idea is in the uh, let's see, Article one. Section three, where are we here? There we are. Article, I'm sorry, Article three, section two. Uh, let's see, the judicial powers, yada, 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 yada. Um, ah, here we go. Um, in all cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers and councils, and those in which the state shall be a party, the Supreme Court shall have original jurisdiction. In all other cases before mentioned, the Supreme Court shall have appellate jurisdiction as to law and fact, with such exceptions and under such regulations as the Congress may make. So at the federal level, um, Congress could say, um, you know what? Supreme Court, you have no jurisdiction over abortion laws. None whatsoever. We're just going to take the definition of marriage, gone. You don't, you don't have it anymore. You are no longer have any jurisdiction over that. Um, uh, the uh, Idaho Constitution says the opposite. It says, no, the legislature cannot deprive the judicial department of any powers which it rightly has. However, it can set up systems of appeals, regulate those systems of appeals, and set mandatory minimum sentencing. Now, whether or not you think mandatory minimum sentencing, sentencing is a good idea or not is a whole other question. That's what the Constitution of Idaho appears to be saying in that section. Not knowing the whole context, there may be other bits and pieces of this that I'm not uh, that familiar with. Yeah, it's kind of interesting how uh, it's different compared to federal. Well, yeah, and, and that's kind of something that we've lost is the idea of a union of free and independent states is we now have 50 states that can do things differently. You know, we people whine and complain about the, uh, you know, California and Empire New York. Hey, if they want to run their states as you know, communist utopias and, and Roman empires, be my guest. The people are free to leave. Or change it. Don't forget that. Or change it. That's true. The, the people have, but that's what I'm saying. If the people of those states want to run them, understand Gavin Newsom is the governor because a majority of the people of California who voted not only voted for him to become governor, but voted to keep him as governor. He oh. is their fault. Their legislature is their fault. They have chosen as a people to have a communist state on the West Coast. New York State has voted to have an, imperi an imperial state. And I, I say that because, you know, not only is New York nicknamed the Empire State, it's run like an empire. I've lived there for many decades. Um, that is their choice. The problem is when they try to enforce those with their those opinions on the rest of the states. That's when the states need to stand up, not go whining to the federal government. They need to stand up and say, no, you know, New York, California, you've made your bed, deal with it. We are not going to bail you out. We are not going to impose your will on others. If you don't like the fact that, well, was it North Carolina decided to uh, protect women in bathrooms? Um, don't go to Cal Don't go to North Carolina. You can't stop your citizens from going, but don't do business with North. If that's what you want, be our guest. But that is the extent of your power is how you do business with other states. Um, if you decide not to, if the government decides not to, okay, that's fine. But uh, no, the, the, these bailouts of the states are, they are the equivalent of reinforcing bad behavior. Uh, they're, they're like they're like handing a bottle of Jack to a drunk. Here you go. 
you're drunk, you're falling down drunk, you you start drinking at six o'clock in the morning, your your blood alcohol level is one point something, you know, 18 hours a day. Here's what we're gonna do to fix it. We're gonna hand you a bottle of we're gonna hand you a case of Jack Daniels. Go for it. I mean, that's equivalent of what we're doing. And we, they have no legal claim on it, but we have so divorced ourselves from a knowledge of the constitution, we don't recognize when our states and our federal government are acting contrary to the commission under which they were created. Um, I use the example, I, I just wrote an article about some of the things been going on in Florida. And, um, you know, a lot of people love what's going on. There's a lot of good that's been going down in the government in Florida. There's also a lot of criminal stuff going down in the government in Florida. There's a lot of unconstitutional. There's a lot of violations of the of the Constitution of the state of Florida or the Constitution of the United States. Um, we need to be more aware of that so that when uh, uh, Congress, when a congressman, a senator encourages the president to simply write off student loans that they didn't legally assume to begin with, you know, we need to recognize that's a problem. Not because of it's not because it's fiscally at issue. It's because what the heck is the federal government doing with, with student loans anyway? It's a it's a crime. It, you know, and, and, you know, forget the niceties. This is a crime. These are these are federal crimes that are being committed right under our noses. And at most, a small percentage of the people jump on Facebook and post memes and and whine and cry and and call people names. But they rarely do anything about it. And we've spent decades making this mess. Unfortunately, we have to live with it until we decide to clean it up. Yeah, <clears throat> that, that whole the whole thing with Florida and doing some unconstitutional stuff. Uh, it, there's a, there's a candidate running for governor out here who's like whose mentality is uh, I'm gonna go in as a king and I'm gonna leave as a governor. His mentality is oh I'm gonna make a bunch of eos and stuff, and then it's gonna like make all the problems go away. But I'm in my mind I'm like those are all what you all illegal, and the next guy will just probably do the same thing and create more problems. You know. That's kind of a verge of the ends justify the means. Yes. You know, okay, I will break the law to save the law. That is, then, <laughs> yeah. then, then do me a favor, then ask him, okay, next time, here's what I want. Next time you're out hunting, shoot your foot so that your gun is empty and you won't hurt somebody with it. Because that's basically what you're saying is, is we're going to authorize illegal activities and pray what? That the next idiot along doesn't do the same thing. I mean, that is, that is such a, a, a childish mentality. Uh, you know, ask him, you know, did he, when does he graduate kindergarten? Because that is, you know, that's, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm sorry, you've just, you've literally just disqualified yourself from holding office because you've already told us you're going to intentionally violate your oath of office upon assuming office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So tell me, why should I trust you with a paper route? You've just told us you're going to lie. You're going to put your hand on a Bible, hold your right hand in the air and lie under oath to support the Constitution of your state and of the United States, and then immediately violate that because it's the right thing to do. Why I shouldn't you, you shouldn't be trusted with a paper route. Yeah. What do you want to know makes that so funny? Because that's Ammon Bundy. That's what... <laughs> well, again, it's not a surprise, right? Because while Ammon Bundy has a mission, um, like most people, he probably knows very little about what the Constitution actually says, or he spends very little time thinking it through. We that's become, the... we, we react know. emotionally, and we don't take the time to to rationally think through a situation right okay. it's let's go hey oh this feels bad we must do something um yes. yeah okay very, very emotional response but that's exactly. the thing he that's what makes it so bizarre with him is he's he he actually does he, I, i've actually been impressed a couple of times like, like oh wow that's not incorrect he's actually correct right there when it comes to the constitution 
But then he does something like that. It's just stuff like that. It's like, what? Make up your mind. Are you are you gonna are you gonna uphold it or are you not? Well, exactly. So if if it, so you basically, you know, and and so what have, I've been saying this since day one of the constitution study. How can you tell when a politician is lying? Their lips are moving. What does it say about the American people that we knowingly hire people that lie to us? Ammon Bundy, you've lied to the to to us. Because first you told us you would uphold the Constitution, then you told us you would violate the Constitution. Which is it? Doesn't matter. You're a liar. Why should I trust you with a paper route, much less any position of trust or power within any government? Yeah, that's the funny thing. That's not the first time he's lied. I've actually found out that he's been doing some suspicious stuff with money, too. So, like, it, it's, it, it's one of those things where, um, and it's again, it's not as right. It, it seems like as soon as people start thinking politics, they will sell their soul for a vote. They will lie, cheat, steal for a vote. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you ever watched the movie uh, Hunt for Red October. There's a, a point where one of the characters goes, listen, I'm a politician, which means when I'm not kissing babies, I'm stealing their lollipops. OK, Emma Bundy, you're a politician. When you're not kissing babies, you're stealing their lollipops. Gotcha. And why should I vote for you? Why should why should I believe anything you say? You're lying to me now. You're lying to them. How do I know? What do I believe? Yeah, that's a great way of putting it. It's, I, it's, it's one of the, part of what I was was saying on on the um, on the article that I just wrote. This will be coming out October fourth. Um, it's one of the reasons why I do not support political parties. I do not endorse politicians. I only support policies. All right. So I've been, excuse me, I've been invited several times, uh, several times, at least six, eight, ten times at this point. Someone has approached me from a, a county Republican committee saying, gee, we'd love to have you come talk to us. And I said, that's absolutely fine. Understand. When it comes to political parties, I am with George Washington, a pox on both their houses, a pox on all their houses. Political parties are their own despotism. They will be the destruction of the union. Now, if you invite me to speak, I will come and teach on the Constitution. I will not denigrate. I will not stand up to denigrate you. I will not denigrate your opponent. But if I'm asked a direct question, I will give a direct answer. I will not tell you. I will not tell your people that the Republican Party is the solution to all of our problems. They are part of the problem, right? But which is probably why not one of them has followed up to actually have me come speak them because that's not what they want to hear. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Unfortunately, I, th I think he's getting a little, Ammon, and Ammon is kind of getting a, a little steam because I think people see him as another Trump, you know, He's very assertive. That's and, and then, get, it, it's it's the same problem. So um, it's if you how read, I put it is people study uh, people suffer from the champion mindset rather than solving the problem themselves. They want to send someone else to do it. That's my my take. If you read Washington's farewell address, uh, in there he says, and I, I use this quote all the time: "The alternate domination of one faction over another." sharpened by the spirit of revenge natural to the party to party dissension, which in ages and countries has perpetuated the most horrid enormities, is itself a frightful despotism. But this leads at length to a more formal and permanent despotism. The disorders and miseries which result gradually incline the minds of men to seek security and repose in the absolute power of an individual, and sooner or later the chief of some prevailing faction more able or more fortunate than his competitors, turns this disposition to the purposes of his own elevation on the ruins of public liberty. I'm in Bundy's just gone from, hey, people look to me. All right, now I'm going to try and elevate myself and that will be the ruin of public liberty. He's fallen into that trap. It's, it's one of the reasons why, you know, you know, when people ask, you know, why don't I run for, for uh for congress or or for some elected office like um well besides the fact that it would be a living hell um and here's my you you tell me how this works 
yes, I, I'm I am eligible for uh, you know I, I I'm eligible to run to to uh, to serve in uh, the, the House of Representatives for my district in Tennessee. Uh, no, I will not campaign. I will not beg for your votes. I will not promise you for votes. Here's my party platform. It where'd I put it? Here's my party platform, the Constitution of the United States of America. It that's it. That's my entire platform right there. My vote on each and every vote in Congress is no until someone shows me in this document that I, that Congress actually has the authority to do it. It would be the shortest campaign speech in the world. How many people do you think are going to vote for me? Me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I get one vote out of 330 million. I get, right. But that's, that's the point. So my goal, you know, it, it's think of it this way. Um, if I'll come up with a really good analogy. Uh, if you come across an accident, right? Say this is a traffic accident. There's someone lying in the street and um, they're, um, they're, they're, they're bleeding and they've got broken bones and they've got, um, you know, obvious internal damaging. They're, 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 and they're not breathing. Do you put Band-Aids on the boo-boos? No. You deal with the serious problem, right? It's, it's what is it? The, it's the ABC of trauma, airway, bleeding, cardiac, right? You, you, right? So you, you, deal, you deal with, can they breathe? Are they bleeding to death? Is their heart beating? You don't worry about the broken bones if their heart's not beating. And the analogy I make is all the problems in Washington, all the problems in our state houses, all the problems in our county courthouses and our, and our city halls are symptoms, not the disease. If you show up to the hospital with COVID-19, you should be less worried about the stuffy head and more worried about the COVID virus. It's, you know, if, if, you, if you show up, if you're having a heart attack, you should be much less worried about the chest pain and what compared to what's actually causing the chest pain. So I can do much more good if I worry less about the symptoms. I still deal with the symptoms. I still try to uh, palliate the symptoms, uh, you know, but I need to work at the disease. And right now the disease in this country is not Washington, DC. It is not our state capitals. It is the universal, the almost universal ignorance and apathy that the citizens of this country have for their responsibilities as citizens to understand the Supreme, to know and understand the Supreme Law of the land, to hold their elected representatives accountable, to not simply vote, but vote, but to vet your candidates that you will vote for based on their fidelity to their oath of office. And if, because if we don't fix that, me getting elected to office makes no difference. I, I, I won't be able to, I will not be able to change a thing until the people understand that the role of Congress is not a goody factory. It is to exercise their power for them in a representative republic and that when a member when when their member of congress violates the uh, uh um it, it, it break, violates the constitution infringes on a right violates a, a delegated power they're not only breaking the law they are stealing from the american people we need to you know then and only then then actually no then then me being in Congress will mean very little. I still mean very little in Congress because if the people are actually vetting their candidates, vetting who they vote for, not based on the bribes they offer, but on their, their fidelity to the constitution, the state houses get fixed. They fix themselves because people will walk up and say, here's my platform. 
this is my only platform. You know, what, what do they teach in the, in, in, in the military? This is my rifle. There are many like it, but this is mine. You know, when this is becomes our constitution, when the people treat this as the supreme law of the land, as their standard for their employees, I don't need to go to Congress because there'll be hundreds and thousands of people that can that not only could do that job, but would free me up to do what I probably do better, which is to write and to speak and to teach. Let the people who are better at playing the, you know, the, the, the politics of it, play the politics of it. Let me do what I do best and to, to write and to speak and to teach. Yeah, well said. I, this, a lot of the stuff you said, I, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to use in a video if you don't mind. No, 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 go ahead. So I've been, we've been ranting for a coming. Someone else had a question, something they want to throw in their two cents. I still got a couple people on, on uh, YouTube. I know YouTube's not sharing mine from that, that, you know, they're out there. They're, they're, de, they're um, de boosting me. I know they're suppressing my numbers. It's, it's always funny. As soon as my numbers start going up a little bit, all of a sudden, psh, and then people say, I didn't get notified of your live stream. Well, no. that's why I say, let's not go through. Don't depend on YouTube. No questions from YouTube. Alex, Christopher, how about you guys? You've been kind of quiet today. Oh, uh, good. You got you got a question? You got a thought? You got something that uh, we can don here? Uh, at the moment, I can't formulate a question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> how about you, Alex? Uh, I think I hope oh, never mind. Is that Alex? I thought I was Alex. <laughs> um, no, uh, something that you just said earlier really just struck me. So I'm just thinking about it a lot more. Um, it was the last comment that you made about as far as where you can be most effective. And that, that really hit me hard because I'm kind of, I am, I am kind of stuck in that position right now. So uh, just deciding what I should do after that, you know? So I'm just, uh, well, uh, what it is is that um, I ran for an office last year and I plan on doing it again. And I just don't, don't, uh, I just don't, like, I am not sure about doing it again. My passion more is teaching the constitution class and listening to like you and stuff and just all of that just is really growing upon me, you know? So I am not taking what you have said as what God wants for, you know, for, for me. It is just an interesting thought that you brought it up at the exact time that I am thinking about it. So um, that is why I am just quiet <laughs> yeah. thinking about it. So. Well, and you know, it, it's, it's an important point. I was up at a college earlier this week. There's a college out here. They, they've got a group that invites me every few months and uh, I enjoy it. Um, it's a relatively small group. It's generally about six, eight, 10 people. Um, they ask pretty good questions. In fact, I've gotten to the point now where, you know, I used to show up with something to say and then follow up the questions. I don't even bother with something to say. I simply show up and go, shoot, you know, <laughs> it's like, just fire the questions. But it's the, the point I made there. And, and the point I want to make is we're all, you know, we're different. We have different callings. We have different passions. We have, we have different decisions that we're going to make. Uh, whether it's you with whether or not you run for office versus me running for office. Uh, part of the discussion we were having 
I was having at this college was um, mandates and, you know, all the, the, the mass mandates, the vaccine mandates, all that stuff. And I, and I was very frank with the kids. I said, listen, we all have to decide for ourselves what is the hill we'll die on. You know, I gave them examples of people who are willing to stand for their rights in different situations. We all have to decide for ourselves what would that will that be. Uh, I may be required to head out to Arizona in a couple months. And um, as part of that, I'm, I'm putting my foot down going, listen, they, they, wanna, they want me to fly to Arizona. Now, I don't mind flying. I, I used to love flying, but I refuse to get a vaccine. I refuse to get a COVID test. I will only wear a mask under duress. In fact, I've got a new mask that I, I made up. When I, was, when I went to this college, I was warned they, they, they have a mask mandate in place. They didn't tell me they didn't actually enforce it. So I brought a mask. I took one of those uh, disposable masks and I got my label printer and I put on it, mandates are tyranny, worn under duress. And I got such a reaction. I think I'm gonna have that. I'm gonna make one of those for the website only it's, it's gonna say the same thing only it's going to be over an upside down American flag because we're in distress. But my point was that was a, um, that was a hill I'm willing to die on. Uh, I'm willing to say, no, I will not, I don't care. And then when I say forced, I'm, 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 I can't get into details, but I may be forced to go to Arizona I will not go if you're going to require a vaccine. I'm not going to go if you're going to require a um, a, a, a vaccine, a, a, a test, a COVID test. Um, if you make me wear a mask, it will be in protest, and I will have that protest on my mask. It will only be under duress. That's the hill I'm willing to die on. I don't expect everybody to do that. I, 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 tr I truly don't. And I think in a free country, we have to recognize that. So uh, you, you made the point of, you know, where does, um, where does that, you know, the, where, where do you sit when, when you say, you know, is, does God want you to run for office? I don't know. I don't know you. I'm not in your head. Um, you know, I can ask God. I don't know if he's going to give me an answer that I'll understand. Uh, at least not for you, but the the thing that, that I brought up to the students going, you know, okay, if my hill is vaccines and, and your hill is um, bringing constitutional ethics to uh, a, a political office and, uh, you know, let's, let's say Papa Reza's hill is uh, getting justice for his, for his, his father or, uh, you, know, uh, you know, Tunnel Lord, it's restoring the Constitution in Idaho. If we're fixing our local areas and those hills we're going to die on, we make a tremendous difference. It's why I keep saying we need to focus on, we need to focus on, regardless, you know, what, what we're still dealing with Washington and the state houses, those are the front lines. We need to look at our counties and our towns and our neighborhoods as our home base. And you need to secure a home base. That's, our, that's the head of our supply line. If you don't have, if you can't be safe at home, then how are you supposed to go out and fight the, the good fight knowing that at any moment they can come raid your, raid your house? Right? So it's, um, you know, that's, the, the, the one caveat I would put on that, uh, on we all have our own hills to die on. I think if we don't protect our home base, we die on that hill. There's no chance. You know, it's, it's, it's like Benjamin Franklin said, if we don't, either we will hang together. Or, no, surely we, will, we must all hang together. No, get this right. We must all hang together or assuredly we will all hang separately. It's that idea that we have to have protection he, you know, of others and, and we need to start in the home, in the neighborhood, in the town, in the county. It's why I recommend people talk to their sheriffs and make sure their sheriffs are gonna, gonna have their six 
because that, that's what I did. I talked to my sheriff to make sure that um, he had my six so that when I travel, I know he's there. When I pick up the phone and dial 911 and his deputy shows up, that deputy is there to protect our rights, all of our rights. That's step one of, of having my back, guarding my six. And that's what we need to focus on. Hey there, Marty. Uh, we don't, um, you don't require vaccines. I'm assuming by, by vaccine, you mean the vaccines or the masks or, I was gonna say, was that, were you there Monday or am I thinking of somebody else? Could be, I don't know. In North Dakota, you never did tell me if I saw you when I was up in North Dakota last month. I'm kind of curious. So come on, any more questions? We've got about 15 more minutes before I'll, um, I'll, I'll shut this down. If, um... Well, this is like a similar conversation we had, uh, I think a couple, uh, uh, the last meeting when I, uh, I think I wrote, uh, when it, what if the sheriff turns corrupt, it's similar to the, um, it's similar to the one we just uh, talked about, like just now. <clears throat> Yeah, it, it, well, it is kind of a recurring thing because uh, I've, I think I've learned to be um, uh, much more focused. You know, I refer to myself as a constitutional scholar. And um, it was funny because I, uh, I, I actually looked up the word. You know me, I like words. And a scholar is not an expert. A scholar is a student. And I thought that would fit quite well because I'm still a student of the Constitution. I'm still learning. We're still, you know, so as I learn, um, you know, I, I, I you know, my, my position grows. It, it, it refines. It says, you know, hey, yes, we need to work in Washington, but we also need to work local. Uh, discussions about things like we, we talked before about um, the U.S. being a um, being a corporation, or the other one I get a lot, which is uh, um, oh, what's it? Uh, Vattel's Law of Nations is in the Constitution of the United States. It's patently not, but you know, it's it's those challenges to those questions that have refined my understanding and and continue to do so. And I hope that uh, they're refining. Uh, they're refining some of, of your ideas and opinions as well. So people may, hopefully are coming up with another question or two. Uh, just so you know, it looks like I'm going to be in the Tampa Bay area on, uh, was it November 10th? That's a tentative date. I'm trying to set several events in that time frame um throughout florida uh so if you're in the florida area let, con and you want to see if we can set something up contact me let me know um like i said i've got one person that set up an event and i've got a couple other people that are that are talking about setting up events but they haven't progressed really far so um and just like i said i'm driving from the nashville area so uh, if um you know, that, you know, Eastern Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, maybe we can work something in along those. Those are great. Um, uh, Marty, I'm in Arizona. I just want to say thank you for your Zoom. I'm, th you know, thank you so much, Marty. It's, um, it, uh, I, I, I enjoyed doing it. Uh, I, I love to hear when people enjoy it. Uh, just so you know, Marty, um, I've, I said this earlier, uh, YouTube's giving me my first warning. Our last Q&A supposedly had some mysterious medical misinformation that YouTube won't tell me about. Um, so sooner or later, they're going to start striking me and they're eventually going to kick me off. I, if, I'm, if you're not over the target, if you're not getting flack, you're not over the target. Um, but it, like I said, it's not in stone, but I may have to go out to Arizona in October. And if I got to be out in Arizona, it, uh, I don't know where in Arizona, I think I'm going to be in the Tucson area. Um, it'd be great to see if we can put something together, even if it's just a, a group of like-minded people having coffee and 
chatting for an evening. You know, I had one, one of the, one of the greatest times I had when I was up in North Dakota, after one of the events, a bunch of us went out and we, uh, we had went out for drinks and we were talking and then some of us went out to dinner and we spent that evening just, you know, chit-chatting and talking and answering and asking questions, had a grand old time. Uh, so who knows, keep in touch. Um, and I'll let you know, uh, if I end up in Arizona, uh, tunnel Lord, I'm still thinking, I still want to see if we can head up to the Pacific Northwest, that general area, Idaho, Western Washington, Oregon, um, those, those somewhere around there in the spring, which, you know, for you guys is about what July. <laughs> well, I mean, I'd say March. Um, come on. You're, you live up, you live practically in Canada. I can't make a snow joke that it's, uh, Oh, uh, <laughs> Viva Coffee in Tucson. All right. If I'm there, I'll, you know, if I make it, I'll have to check out Viva Coffee. Uh, I have a question. <clears throat> what would you tell the people who are thinking of voting for him and Bundy? Besides, you know, the fact like, you, you know, he's proven to, to be willing to break the law to somehow fix the law. You know, I think, I think the people who are willing to vote for him are, are so concerned of what's going to happen there. Like they, uh, I don't think they realize what they would be, what they'd be voting for. I don't know. Um, well, what would I tell them? Well, the first thing I tell them is, so you're telling me you're okay with a person lying to you just to get an office. Cause either he lied to you before he lied to you after right? you're willing with someone to break the law just to convince you to vote for him to get into office, supposedly to fix the law. Um, rather than you, 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 you know, so you've already told us that you're not going to uphold your oath of office. You're going to violate your oath of office on day one. Uh, you're going to break the law to try to uphold the law. Um, really, is that the best person that you can find in Idaho to run for office? Is a liar and a criminal? Can't you find someone better? There maybe is. not. Maybe the answer is you can't find anyone better. Maybe maybe he is the lesser of two evils. But if that's the case, you can't come whining when he breaks the law in a way you don't like. If you hire, you, you can't walk down, you, you can't go to, to uh, the godfather and tell him you want a problem fixed and then be surprised when he goes out breaking legs, busting noses and, and shoot and, and, and taking people out. If you told me you're going to commit a crime, I can't be surprised when you can commit a crime. Now, maybe it's not the godfather. Maybe it's one of the lower guys that you go to. You're still dealing with a criminal. And like anything else, right, once you get sucked into that first one, you are caught. Um, so it, it comes down to, is that the best you can do is a liar and a criminal? And if that's the best you can do, the people of Idaho have some work to do. That doesn't mean that that maybe that you know people will still vote for him. They may they may look at it and it's like I said, he's the he's the least worst option. Okay, but that means you've got a lot of work to do. If the least worst option is a liar and a crook, is a liar and a criminal, you got some work to do. Yeah, there's there's a way better option. <clears throat> um, way better, but. I think it's going to take some convincing for the, for people to understand why she's better. Okay. Cause she, unfortunately um, she's Lieutenant governor. She didn't actually like when the whole 2020 thing happened, uh, the governor made a stay at home order for 21 days and she never like verbally said to stop it, but she has a really good history of, of upholding Liberty and righteousness. So it's, it's just kind of like, you know, does she does she uh, uphold her oath of office? Well, yes, as lieutenant governor, yes, she did during that twenty. That's that's the first question that I that I always ask, and then uh, so that that becomes the question going. Okay, it's uh, I'm going to mangle the verse. The the you know one side seems right until you see the other side, and that's just as true when you're looking at a politician, right? One side seems right. 
things are evil, they're corrupt. You got to go in there and clean house. And, you know, if it means I got to break the law to do it, if I, you can't make an omelet without breaking some eggs. All right. The flip side of that is you have a liar in a crook in office. Okay. So what, well, well, then what are my options? Well, okay, look, we have a lieutenant governor. Can you show me times when she has stood up to fulfill her oath of office when it was unpopular, when it was going against the grain? And if the answer is yes, so the question becomes, okay, do you want someone who, um, who has already told us, has already lied to us, has already told us they're going to violate their oath of office, they're going to commit, a, they're going to make, commit crimes to do what they think is right, which means what good are your rights if someone in office can violate your rights because they think it's the right thing? Isn't that how we got the vaccine mandates? Isn't that how we got the mass mandates? How is this any different? The only difference is the, is the, 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 is the political party, right? Compare that to somebody who said, you know what? It, it, it's politically not the rest answer, but my oath says I have to do this. And they did it. So would you prefer to have a, a, a liar and a crook and an oath breaker in office? Or would you rather have someone who's probably a liar, possibly a crook, but at least is an oath keeper in office? If you've changed the vetting standard, in, in their minds, as you open them to it, says to don't vet on emotion, don't vet on party. One person is promising to break their oath. One person has shown they will fulfill their oath. Everything else becomes window dressing. Because if he says he'll break his oath to give you what you want, what's to stop him from breaking his oath? to give someone else what they want that is not what you want. It's the, it's, it's kind of the nature of the beast that we've fallen into. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, well put. All right. Well, listen, we are coming to the bottom of the hour. Uh, I want to find, I'm actually searching for Viva Coffee in Tucson. So I can check it out if I end up out there. There we go. Um, you know, we live in a strange world. Life is crazy. Life is nuts. Um, and there are times when we get discouraged, you know, whether it's, Hey, we ended up with happened with a decent, you know, uh, turnout. We ended up with, uh, I got, I got three people on the zoom. I had three and four people on YouTube. It's still a small group. <clears throat> um, if my mission, and I'm, I'm starting to think of it now as a mission, as a calling, as, as something to do, is to help educate the American people. My, my mission is to educate the American people about their constitution, about their rights, and about their responsibilities. And, you know, right now I am basically one man shouting in the wilderness. If that's my call is to be one man shouting in the wilderness, then I will shout as long as I have air in my lungs. But I would love to see a few more people listening to the, to, to the message, whether it's from me or whether it's from people like you who listen to me and bring that message along as well. So, um, you know, I don't want to be dependent on YouTube. I don't want to be dependent on others because I've been disappointed and, and too often. So let's, uh, you know, it, it'll be a couple of weeks before our next, uh, our next Q and A. Actually, when is our next Q and A? Our next Q and A will be actually be three weeks. It'll be the 14th of October. Um, you know, if we can bring more people, expose them to the ideas. You know, I, I, I'm not so much saying let's bring people in. Let's expose people to these ideas. Get them thinking. Get them a asking questions. And, and then tell them, hey, you know, we've got a place where we can get some answers or at least point us in the right direction. And see if this movement can gather a bit more steam. 
I know I'm not the only person that's that's pushing this movement. And I mean, the, the Constitution isn't the only player in town, right? Someone already talked about Chris Ann Hall. Um, you know, there are others. You've got wall builders, you know, and, and um, you've got a lot of, of several law firms that are doing what they do best. Um, let's not worry about, you know, let, let's find... I'm going to paraphrase a, a, a guest I had on my radio program that'll be coming out next week. Um, let's see where we've got where we can find common ground and work together on that. We're not going to have common ground on everything. Let's find where we've got common ground, work together on that, and where we've got common ground with other people, we'll work together on that as well. Because ultimately, I hope our purpose is to end up with a a electorate that is not only educated but applying that knowledge to the choice of those who represent us and it's going to take a long time this is a this is a long slog this is not a uh, you know hey we're done in an election or two but i do this because i have a daughter and I want her to grow up in a country that is as free as possible. And it's my responsibility to do whatever I can to leave her a country as free as I, as I received it, preferably freer. And I think that's the work that we have to work on. We have to, we have to do. And hopefully that's the goal. Uh, that's the mission of the Constitution study. Hopefully that's what everyone here is looking for is um, ways of doing that, getting answers of how do we do that? How do we deal with this? Help me understand. And hopefully that's something that we value and cherish enough that we will share it with friends, family, neighbors, and uh, maybe that will make a difference. Because if we're, if, if, we're, if we're sharing that message of freedom and liberty and rights with the people closest to us, we are building that bubble of protection around our home base. And then all we have to do is get more home bases on board and it starts making a huge difference. So thanks everyone for your time tonight. See you in a few weeks. Everyone have a great night. And uh, if you think of some questions, bring them to the next Q and a good night, everyone. Bye. One thing you have to know wherever you make your stand came from